now uh, is the debate discussion i think uh, president council chandran lena patmedi gave it to us a lot of question with kamini i think your contributions are very important sir mike Chairman yeah, sir, it is obviously to the last speaker <laughs> because of this topic you have selected in conjunction with your own faculty dean. Uh, there was a series of development. There was gender marriages under the normal circumstances. Then the Civil Partnership Act later on because it was happening in the, in the, in the, in the society, and then the 2013 Act, and then there was a marriage. So do you propose, now it seems that even the UN, even the UN, they are also saying that the other countries must adopt similar legislation. In a society of our nature, because the things are happening in private, I know we all know that, but should we just come and introduce as a piece of legislation just because there is an influence in the world? Yes, sir. Thank you very much for your uh, question. Um, yes, this is the question country like Sri Lanka. That is the reason, sir, I even had, uh, even though this is a comparison of the English law, I had some slides which says the development of the Nepal and India, which are very similar to the Sri Lankan culture and uh, political and other barriers. But they have changed. And the other thing is, uh, it was never been offensive in Sri Lanka before British comes here. So many people believe it's a Western concept and it is imported from the Western countries. But the truth is, what is important is not the homosexuality, but the law. My, my. Excuse me. And also, uh, give me one second, sir. Uh, I believe, uh, also, sir, I believe, uh, what is the, I also uh, had some uh, interviews in the sense the formal discussions. What, especially some uh, NGO persons, what they are crying need is not to have gay marriages in Sri Lanka, but just to not to decriminalize it. No one in Sri Lanka, I don't think at the moment, is crying for uh, gay marriages. But they, as one of the interviewers said to me, he doesn't care what the people say, think, but I care what the law says. For the Therefore, something like uh, adultery or suicide are now civil wrongs. Yes. And again for you, for the benefit of us, when a two different when a, when a marriage happens between two persons, they can even adopt a child. Now they are being homosexuals or otherwise. Please God, don't get offended of me for using that word. Then, how if, are there legal provisions in other countries for that type of marriages to adopt a child? Adoption is allowed in other countries even before they recognize the gay marriages. And this is another controversial thing because uh, one of the opponents says that uh, traditional marriage was between a man and a woman. In American case it says marriage between a black and white was a prohibition one time but time has changed and also they argue that today the free production is not the only objective of the marriage there are some couples they don't have children and as you said there are cloning human beings and there are so many other ways to free production In vitro fertilization. i think it's a choice Yes. You may drink Coca-Cola, I may drink uh, <laughs> soda. That's it. So, yes. no need to drink everyone Coca-Cola. Yes. Uh, I have got uh, two questions. Uh, the first one is about uh, the sexual uh, violence against women. Uh, it's about the scope of se uh, Section 345 of the Penal Code. Now, there it doesn't specify intention. So, the 
uh, rasna behind it is to find out uh, like you know who the person was who said anything to a woman now how do you distinguish between uh, section 345 and uh, the freedom for expression under article 14 that is one and the second one is about uh, sexual orientation now I've got two questions there first is that article 12 does not contain any pro any part of it uh, saying that you know uh, the discrimination part of it like should not be uh, based on sexual orientation so I'd like to know your opinions on it and second one I'd like to know if the US case and this Nas foundation case now if both of these they extend now if it is like uh, limited to what two people consenting can do then uh, it also extends to so many other things like bestiality then necrophilia then uh, pedophilia so many other things so what are your opinions on this thank you Yes, and thank you for the question. Uh, freedom of expression uh, should not be exercised in a manner in which uh, it, not in a manner, it, it should not uh, offend others. And uh, freedom of expression is, there should be a demarcation for freedom of expression because uh, you cannot uh, uh, disrespect or you cannot undermine the dignity of others to exercise your freedom of expression. So that's my answer. Chairman, sir, through you to the third speaker, who spoke, the same speaker spoke about the torture. Now, in your speech, you have uh, dealt with only the torture or the situation of a normal police custody. You would like to know whether you have, you would like to address us on the aspect of national security. In at a time of a danger to the national security, whether the torture is allowed to extract information. Thank you very much for your question, sir. Uh, actually, sir, no matter even in a high security scenario or in the general law, normal circumstance, torture is a violation of fundamental right. It is, uh, it is also in the, in the military and in police standards, it is also called as enhanced interrogation, which is in other countries, uh, even though uh, before the establishment of the U UDHR, those things have been practiced, but those things have doesn't have any legal if uh, legal uh, those are not legally uh, accepted. Therefore, sir, no uh, no matter about the uh, security high, high security scenario or anything, it is totally a prohibited act. That's my answer. Thank you. I think uh, earlier. There were two questions. One yes, sexual one was regarding English the Nas Foundation case and the English case. Uh, in fact, the uh, U.S. case was uh, it's just two months old. Uh, I, I downloaded and keep it in my uh, computer. But uh, to be honest, uh, Nas Foundation case was, case was delivered in 2009. But before that, India had uh, several development, even though they don't accept the decriminalization or uh, gay marriages. In the uh, American case, in fact, America had decriminalized the homosexuality long time ago. What they had done in this case was to recognize the gay marriages. In India, there is nothing to do with the gay marriages. It's, it's, it's still in the first stage. In the human rights law of the sexual orientation, there are three stages. Non-discrimination, then uh, recognize of civil partnership and then the something like uh, gay marriages giving all the rights of heterosexual to the uh, homosexual so that's what done in US in two months ago but even in the India even that case after 2009 2013 that was reversed by the Supreme Court I think that's the culture and attitudes of the South Asian countries but still there are some good uh, development in India as an example India there are they accept this only one example three type of passports in their passport there are F M and O O refers to others male female and other that type of development are there in India and there are some laws they have passed in some states where they cannot be discriminated. They cannot uh, deny the scores. If you have seen about the news again in three 
years ago, one of the transsexual lady was given a state of principle in one school in India. There are transgenders and what is called hijra. Hopefully in Sri Lanka they are known as the ponya or whatever. Those people are, they are human beings with, I, 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 I'm sorry, I use that name with the due respect. But uh, uh, there are a lot of number of people in India, so they are known as the O passport, other passport. So India has to, just to decriminalize, they struggle to decriminalize this type of act, while in American case it's completely different to me, while they try to give all other rights of the heterosexual to the homosexual people. I think uh, with this we can conclude the session, but President Council Chandana Leena Patapendiki gave a very good comment. When you are doing your research, so national security one side. So those are real practical issues. He's a senior practicing lawyer because he has seen a lot of cases and he has appeared. So when you are doing this research, you must consider that side also. Because in a research, two way. Even we know what happened to Bin Laden, Al-Qaeda leader. So these are world famous cases. Yes, sir. So just consider that side also with the limitations. Uh, I think all the papers, they have done a lot of work and these are all uh, continuing papers and very informative as well as uh, all these uh, information, whatever you have provided, very important for your colleagues also. So most of the time consider rather than advantages, what are the disadvantages we are having. That question was very good because of this. section 365, one case was raised. And also this, uh, whatever the section you mentioned, how many cases filed in Sri Lanka? Yes, that is also a question. In fact, uh, uh, there are no reported cases, couldn't file any. It doesn't practice in practical law. But, sir, the question is, this existence of mere law is enough for the police officers and other gangs to brand them as lawbreakers and to decriminalize them. Maybe in the workplace, maybe in the forces, or maybe in uh, whatever. Ne? They have, sometimes they have limited to the chefs or maybe in the saloons, which you may get much out of them. Therefore, even though even though there are no cases reported, this, if there are no cases, if they are not prosecuted, why they, that law is there? That's my problem and my argument. Also, uh, when a research is conducted, the most important thing is research problem. All the papers you mentioned the research problem, and based on the research problem, we can prepare the research questions and hypotheses. But practical reality also very, very important most of the time. Now, legal analysis you had given. You have analyzed all the laws, international conventions, domestic laws. But when we are doing a field study with a pilot survey, you can see. Right to privacy is very important uh, because when you are doing this uh, LGBT right thesis, they may never reveal anything. Sometimes you can't identify which type of uh, idea. So with this uh, concept, we have to get the ground reality. In your university, there was a senior professor, Professor Nandasin Ratnapal. He conducted a lot of social surveys and research. When he was doing uh, research on beggars, he act as a beggar for two to three months' time. So this is where the real perception we have to get. Otherwise, uh, uh, these are some of the challenge for us. We have to see what type of challenges are there. In a legal research, it is very important. Uh, not like uh, other research, we are doing a case study also. So all the cases, when you are analyzing, in a literature review part, you are two laws as well as decided cases, specifically on torture, 
lot of literature there. But Sri Lanka Human Rights Commission, nowadays we are not receiving much uh, applications. You can't appeal to Human Rights Commission, but you can send an application. Yes. I can remember for the last six months, drastically gone down. Very good improvement there. But police inefficiency was the biggest problem. And custodial deaths, 708 was there for last few months. Yes. But other than that, torture because of Sri Lanka Police Academy, Police College, they conduct a uh, lot of uh, service and also because of their promotions. As well as uh, uh, when they are applying for their seniority, they know if a petition filed in Supreme Court or even in Human Rights Commission, they may not get that chance. So institutional-wise also, they try to promote freedom of torture. Yes. So those are very important when you are conducting this research. And also another two to three minutes we can give. If you have any question, you can ask before the tea because we'll finish by 3.10. Any uh, other ideas? Any other questions? I have a question to yeah, the fourth please. speaker. Uh, the fourth speaker you spoke on youth uh, as uh, a constituency and professionalism of youth, uh, how to build up the uh, professionalism. And uh, she, no, she mentioned uh, in passing that youth is a new constituency, which is an interesting uh, aspect because uh, in the UN discourse, I have noticed that they are considering youth to be a separate uh, constituency in itself in the negotiation process. Now, we have the youth parliament, which is separate from the uh, general parliament, uh, but they are making recommendations and they are making the discussions. But in the UN process, they have taken youth into the uh, negotiations itself, the original the negotiations which involve in making an internationally binding document or a declaration. So in that, youth is again engaged, and that is a very, uh, very good uh, development. And I, I want to know whether you have observed this, and what are your thoughts on this aspect? Yes, ma'am. Actually, I've observed this. Uh, when speaking of the Sri Lanka Youth Parliament, as I've got uh, to know from the Sri Lankan Youth Parliamentarians, I have my colleagues there, they have, I think they've only uh, assembled for once or twice, and they haven't yet assembled for, a, like, uh, it's a, it's a, it's actually a very good forum uh, for the youth to engage. But then again, uh, we do not see that the parliament is actually uh, having their sessions effectively. And to, uh, and also when talking about the United Nations, we each and every year annually there are Sri Lankan youth delegates representing the Sri Lankan, uh, the, the Sri Lankan identity at the General Assembly, and they are chosen from a very, uh, a very, uh, uh, very uh, comprehensive interview each and every year. So uh, actually the Sri Lankan youth are given uh, representation uh, annually, but then again there are so many other uh, things that we need to actually pay our attention. And uh, as I suggested, to come up with a youth charter, we should effectively implement all the policies. Thank you. Any other questions, clarifications? Yeah. From the day speaker, I would love to ask this. Uh, if I st say state this, that you are beautiful, would it really amount, oh, you would really accuse me of catcalling? Yes. You would have, yes sir, he's violating my freedom of his expression now, isn't she? Uh, what is the word you use, beautiful? Yes sir. Street harassment is not a compliment, and whatever is. I'm complimenting is you, it is my intention now, isn't it? So let's, let's see like this. If we say beautiful, is it a harassment? Yes, because <laughs> it is. <laughs> because uh, what about whatever? the audience? Audience. <laughs> Would you like to be called beautiful? Would you like being called beautiful? Yes, yeah, she likes it. So, <laughs> so uh, that uh, we call them Vidya Bandaras. <laughs> It's a beautiful name, I think. It's also beautiful. Uh, don't, uh, I, I would say, these stereotypical attitudes and uh, uh, harmful practices, uh, as lawyers, we don't say beautiful. Uh, I'm not, uh, no offense or nothing personal, but still uh, we have to eliminate these practices 
and stereotypes. He may be, a, he may be greeting sometimes. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, not, not every time. And what if I say that you're beautiful? <laughs> yeah, so you, right, that, that's a stereotypical attitude because you would like it, but when it comes to men, uh, sorry, when it comes to women, uh, the majority, they do not like it because it, it is a, sorry? That's what I have uh, mentioned throughout the presentation uh, in the uh, research. May I interject? Uh, with the I think, stats. I think this is the reason uh, why I already asked that question before, as in that there needs to be a fine line between freedom of expression and uh, Article 345. Because intention does not come into the picture in Section, in section 345 of yes, the Penal Code. Uh, so uh, there needs to be a clear definition of what the scope is. Uh, intention is needed uh, for a criminal offence, therefore the burden of proof is high. That's the reason why I propose a civil law remedy. Therefore, the, there is no su evidence is needed, but the intention, such a, a high burden of proof is not required to prove uh, such offences in civil law remedy. That is why uh, I explain that you should deviate it from a criminal offence and a civil law remedy. Let me also comment on this problem. Uh, when you are in UK, what I <laughs> notice is that if you say a 55 years old lady that you are very sexy, she must be very happy and definitely will say you thank you. <laughs> so, so that's their system. So it depends. It depends the way you express it, the, the group you are in, and the culture you are living in. Yes. Hopefully, yes. Sometimes I say it, but just to appreciate it. And sometimes it does not only limit to saying beautiful, they use filthy words actually. So that's a mental torture and a frustration to a majority of the ladies actually when walking down the streets. So you so distinguish based saying on the beautiful filthy words. Is, sorry? So you, base, you distinguish the cat calling and compliment based on the filthy words. Then there is a distinction, not the intention then, as I was so asked. So, but, you, so uh, you base the distinction uh, okay, you answer. on the words. No, any, uh, but what's the purpose of uh, calling names, beautiful, ugly, or uh, Actually, whatever? Not. What's the use? What's the purpose? Uh, I have not seen women uh, usually. But they said the intention is not important. Yes, well, no, the intention is not so important. So they said. But you are a, yeah, sorry. Uh, if you are a stranger, then uh, why you should compliment on others? Because you don't know Sir, that person. Do I have a right to express myself? I do. Sorry, wrong. You can't. Oh, as long you. as uh, then, no. you you can you uh, you have seen the Hello? freedom of expression. This is the most interesting debate we are having. The whole <laughs> because uh, you cannot <laughs> make the whole participant participate. Sir? Yeah, we'll give president counsel. No, no. Again, just a comment, just a small, <laughs> just a friendly remark. Now you said that the, why do you? I mean, my daughter was once shouted at, "Hi, beauty, hi, beautiful." From that day onwards, whenever we pass that place, that shop used to come in and you have a good laugh. Now you said a little while ago that why making names and then uh, the women, you, have you heard women making names like that? Well, I have seen in so many advertisements that where are there are Indian advertisements where the uh, fragrance advertisements where the men are wearing and then the women getting activated and saying names. I mean, I'm so sorry, this is it. Since uh, doctor wanted me to uh, speak about the age limits, um, let me also say that the youth policy, the international guidelines, uh, I think uh, between the age of uh, 14 to 29, uh, a person is considered as a youth, but in Sri Lankan uh, youth policy considered, uh, considers a youth uh, uh, as a person between the age group of 14 to 24, am I right? Yes, but uh, youth policy is not the Sri Lankan law. Sri Lankan law, according to the Children and Young Persons Act, I think 1948, considers a youth as a person between the age group of 14 to 16. And the age of majority ordinance considers a youth as a person who has reached the age of 18. And there was another uh, improvement uh, when the tsunami struck Sri Lanka that is, under the Tsunami Special Provisions Act, the age group was brought up to 21 years. So a young person was considered a person between the age group of 18 to 21 in the Tsunami Special uh, Provisions Act. 
just to commend to you. Thank okay. you very much, madam. Finally, we have come to an end. So we will continue this uh, debate with our vice uh, rector also there. Uh, this is very interesting. So certain <laughs> topics which are hiding in the society <laughs> come up. Okay. okay, thank you very much, Honorable Chair. And uh, thank you everyone for that active participation. And I would like to say that this uh, session has been indeed a new, exploring new dimensions of human rights because I didn't see any of the uh, traditional human rights coming up in discussion. It's all new dimensions and new rights being talked of. Uh, thank you very much for that uh, contribution. Now I would like to call upon the Honorable Chair to distribute the certificates to the participants. Ms. Hasini Ratnamarala. Ms. K. E. R. L. Fernando. Ms. K. H. M. Navoda. Ms. N. Ratna Tilaka. Ms. M. A. N. Chandra Tilaka and Dr. Pratibha Mahana Meheva. Now I would like to call upon the rector of the Southern Campus, Brigadier Lal Gunasekara, to hand over the token of appreciation for our Honorable Chairperson. Thank you very much. There's refreshments available for you all.